Hello, and uh, thank you for coming. I uh, was asked to speak slowly, so I decided to keep my content simple so that I'm easily understood. Um, so this is a continuation of uh, what Simon was talking about. We're working on uh, basically a browser for VG. And um, we've got a good team of people uh, together so far. So uh, all of us have uh, each gotten our own like two to three year grants to work on building uh, a browser for, for these new graph genomes because we really believe in this technology. We really think that graph genomes are the way of the future and so we want to build the first production scale uh, graph genome browser. And uh, obviously the big challenge there is, is the visualization side of things. So um, if, if, anyone, if you know of anyone who's working in this area, we'd like to talk with them because I know my life personally is uh, made more difficult by having 10 competing tools and I have to decide which one. Uh, I'd rather have one high quality tool uh, that people can turn to, so we're happy to collaborate. Um, so before this, I was working on a, a genome visualization tool. So on the left here is the whole of chromosome 18. And uh, when you zoom in on it, every single one of those pixels is a nucleotide. So it is possible with the right layout to be able to see a chromosome and to be able to see nucleotides. And that's kind of the goal that we'd like to see is just, uh, we'd like to be able to see the genome at every scale be able to see the big picture without sacrificing detail. So uh, our starting paradigm for this is the sequence tube map, which is essentially a multiple sequence <coughs> alignment. And you can find us at graphgenome.org, though. The demo is not up right now. Um, uh, but basically, the challenge is to take that sequence and to just kind of look at that graph topology and to say, how are the nodes interconnected with each other? And what we found is that if you just keep zooming out on this, uh, then after a while you can't really distinguish any useful features. Um, and as you begin to add more and more individuals, so this is 56 individuals, the, the, the visualization sort of becomes unstable. Um, so I, I was trying to take some of these lessons learned and see if we could apply them here. And a big one is being able to pre-compute your, uh, your zoom levels. So um, the, the fluent DNA visualization, it'll run on a phone because it's all pre-computed. And so we're going to try and do a similar thing, but instead of a graphical zoom where we're just making things smaller, we really need a semantic zoom where we're, we're identifying meaningful features in the data. So this is real data. Um, I'm working with the Arabidopsis 1001 Genomes Project. And in this real data, you can see that this whole graph is really just two nodes. There's the orange, um, there's the orange and brown across the top here has, uh, always has the same variation and then all of the others have that. And so, if you look at this, the way this graph was constructed is a bit unnecessary because all of these nodes here could just be collapsed into one node and these nodes on the top can be collapsed into another node. So instead of having 20 nodes, we could just have two. And if we do that, then we can start zooming out more and looking at larger regions. So uh, I sat down with a whiteboard and did a whole bunch of thinking and came up with a series of graph operations. And then this fellow, Torsten Pook, uh, did me a favor and read my mind and published the paper without asking me. Um, but he did it back in time, so he must also have a time machine. Anyways, you could probably figure this out too if you think about it long enough. Uh, but basically the idea is that you start with um, you start with your, your nodes, and each of these nodes is like a, a bit of a, a locus. And um, it works kind of, like, uh, uh, kind of like the sort of uh, puzzles that you'd solve for fun, is you figure out what changes can I make to the graph uh, that will allow me to collapse things together, sort of 
sort of candy crush for the graph genomes. Um, and so the first thing that you can do, it's just pretty easy, is just, okay, three and two here, all of them go from one to two. And so with, we can just merge those together and have a single node. That one is easy. Um, and the one that's a bit more interesting is this one called split groups, uh, which I was just coding. And it's where you have, you have this irritating anchor node here. Um, that's what we saw in our real data. So there's 106 coming out here, 106 going in here. Um, but this is causing basically a bundling. And so if you split those into 1A and 1B, then this whole section here can be merged together uh, because you've basically split out that anchor. And so that's what we're doing right now. And the wonderful thing about having someone else already having published this is that we get to actually look at what, what the results would be using this kind of algorithm. So you, these are basically big blocks. If you want to call them haplotypes, you can, but they're, they're big blocks where for this particular position in the genome, these are all of the individuals that, that have basically the same sequence variation. And um, this one, you'll notice, kind of gets scrambled as you move away. Um, but it's nice that in sequence tube map, uh, we can rearrange the order of individuals. So this will actually look a lot nicer when we're done. Um, Oh yeah, so that's us rearranging individuals. So I'd like to invite uh, anyone interested to, to come and hack with us. Um, so we have already uh, a haploblocker implementation in R. So we have this kind of gold standard that we can design tests off of. And uh, we have a basic Python implementation already. Um, and then we already have a Django database schema. Um, that's working, and so it's a matter of putting those together. So if you like these little sort of puzzle-solving problems where we're knitting things together, uh, then we'll be able to get this whole uh, optimized summarization thing uh, going. And uh, I thought since this is Japan, I'd give you a mental image of where this is going. So we can combine all of our pieces together and we'll have visualization uh, and, and we'll have this one browser. And we've already got import and export, uh, which makes this useful to other people. And so summarization in the database is really supporting this, this browser. And so the pieces are very close to coming together now. So it's an, it's an exciting time uh, right now. And I, I hope you, uh, some of you will join us. Um, so one other thing that's uh, important to note about this is that even if you decide that you hate our browser, uh, what we're doing is going to be useful if you're using graph genomes because of this key component. So we have summarization. We also have import and export, which means that you can import any of your GFA or VG data, and then you can summarize it. And it'll give you, um, it'll give you a new structure that you can export. And so you can use this to summarize your own data as well. Um, so the, the, the hopefully the end result is that all of these very linear segments will be able to you know, collapse into much fewer nodes. But then the genuinely tangled spots, so for example right here, those will stay, uh, those will stay tangled. And so you'll be able to zoom out and see that big picture level where uh, you can see the big picture, and then you'll be able to, to zoom in and inspect those nucleotide sequences. So thank you. <laughs>